Good morning and welcome to Dearborn High School. I'm Adam Martin, I'm the principal here and I'm really blessed to be here. Uh, I am truly honored to stand before you on this special day, but before we begin, uh, let me introduce the color guard and please rise as they present the colors. We have uh, Mike Cardosi, Art Garrison, Tony Grammer, David Klein, and Francis Light Leader. Post colors, huh. present, huh. order, huh. lift, hey. forward, Thank you. Please stay standing um, as our women's ensemble, led by director Ms. Carmel Atkins, is here to perform the national anthem. I hope. <laughs> they checked in with me and I told them to come promptly at 8.40. Once again, this is our women's ensemble, directed by Ms. Atkins. Thank you, Ms. Atkins and the Women's Ensemble. I don't know about you, but I think it was worth the wait, correct? All right. Before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge some special guests in attendance today. Uh, first of all, would all representatives of the Armed Forces, past and present, please rise? Thank you. 
I would also like to recognize all of our school board members that are here, uh, former and present. Um, Treasurer Hussein Berry. <laughs> Trustee James Thorpe. And also a former board member, Roxanne McDonald. I would also like to recognize members of our, of our executive cabinet, uh, Mr. Tom Wall. and Ms. Shannon Peterson. We have some, uh, some city council members here. Um, I would like to recognize Council President Pro Tem, uh, Tom Tofelski. And Council Member Michael Serini. And I would like to recognize our special guest and our guest speakers, uh, Mayor Jack O'Reilly. Dr. Glenn Maleko, Superintendent. <laughs> Ms. Lisa Stark, former Dearborn teacher and published author. Art Garrison. Art is a Dearborn High alumnus and former Army Specialist fifth class. And finally, Phil Smith. Phil is the Director of Chief Veteran Service Officer, President of the James Heward VVA and Retired Marine of 27 years. Thank you again to the Dearborn High Men's and Women's Ensemble and Ms. Atkins. The Men's Ensemble will be performing later. Um, thank you again to the Dearborn Police Department in the back there uh, for their support for the ceremony. Special thanks to our social studies teacher, Jared Maynard and Matt Schleif, along with our literacy coordinator, Ms. Lori Littner and Ms. Christine Rosberry, for your assistance in organizing and helping our students research the lives, hold on, of our fallen Dearborn heroes. Just two more thank yous. Uh, thank you to the Westbourne Market for their generous donation of the memorial wreath. Uh, that's below me here. And last but certainly not least, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize any former or DHS alumni. Do we have any Dearborn High alumni here? Any? Any and all? Thank you. Finally, welcome to our students. I'm honored to stand before you on this special day. The purpose of this ceremony is twofold. We are here to honor our past and educate our future. Memorial Day, which is celebrated on the last Monday in May across the United States, is a day reserved to remember the sacrifices made by our service members in defense of our great nation. We are here today to honor the memories of Dearborn High School pioneers that gave their lives in service to our country. Throughout its history, Dearborn pioneers have answered the call to serve. Its sons and daughters have been sent to faraway conflicts never to return. These pioneers had courage, they had pride, they loved their families and their communities and they were willing to risk their lives so that we can live in peace. Please listen to the words and stories that you will hear this morning. I ask that you take some time this weekend to think about what your fellow pioneers were asked to do, the sacrifices they made, the lives that they did not get to live so that we could live in freedom. At this point, I'd like to welcome our featured speaker, Mayor Jack O'Reilly. Hey, thank you. Uh, you know, it's, it's really difficult in one way that this, this, this event comes up at the time that is so busy in your lives because you've got so much going on. This is the end of the school year. Uh, I know that there's, there's events going on. And uh, so it's hard to focus on something like this. And also many of you, if you're uh, going to be graduating, are thinking about what you're going to do next or, or um, you know, th those kinds of things, which is very legitimate. Uh, that's right. But... Uh, it's really also really important that we uh, honor those people who, who made this ultimate sacrifice. So this event that we're a part of today is related to the idea that someone who went over and served their country and, and unfortunately uh, was killed in action and therefore they never came back. And they were family members, friends of people, uh, and you're going to hear about that. But it's, it's the idea that 
we know we live in a troubled environment, and, and, and it's always been that way. I mean, it's not like uh, that we've ever had a, a period where there wasn't threats of, of, of violence, threats of, of um, caused, that could have caused harm to people and could have impacted us. And so in those times when we need to, we call upon our citizens to come forward and get engaged and to serve in the military. And, and it means that they're disrupting their lives. So as you think about what you are planning to do, what's, what you're looking at, what you want to do after you finish school here. My children went here. I was very familiar with this environment. They graduated. They've gone on to very successful uh, careers. But the thing about this is, while you're talking about this or thinking about and what you're going to do, we're honoring the people who set aside those plans, who said, I'm going to go and serve my country in the military, and I'll get back to them. I'll get back to my plans. I'll get back to uh, getting, going on forward with my life in a different way. But in this event, we're saying, thank you for your courage. Thank you for your commitment. And we honor you and your families because you paid the ultimate sacrifice. You gave up your life in order to make sure that we had our freedom. And that's really what this is about. So we want to take that moment because, you know, through the line of, of lineage that goes on and in Dearborn, we've had our, our parade. This is uh, 93 years consecutively. It is one of the largest in the country, our parade. It's one of the little, in Michigan, it's, it is the largest and has gone on the longest. And so we have an element of pride in Dearborn that we never forget. And we have a lot of other events related to veterans, related to our flag, related to things. This is one that is very special because it's honoring those who died in, in defending our freedom. And that's what makes it so important and so somber. So I, I appreciate it because if you think about it, they were sitting in the same classes, and we're going to hear about it. They were sitting in, this, in, in the auditorium in classes like you are, and they had plans for their life. They had ideas. They knew what they wanted to do, um, or at least they were, they were going to uh, move forward and go on to become somebody uh, that they could be proud of. And all of that was put aside and ultimately never achieved. And the families that we also honor because they made the ultimate sacrifice also, one of their own, a person that, you know, a, ch a child that they had raised and spent time with and really committed to and loved so deeply, and they were lost also. So again, it's an important event. I'm really pleased that we're doing this today and I know that with everything going on in your lives, it's hard to really focus on something, but for this moment, we want you to focus and think about it because it really does reflect democracy. It really does ref reflect the fact that we are all part of one enterprise. We're all on the same page. We want everybody in, this con in, in our country to succeed, to be successful, but sometimes it means that we have to do things that We'd rather not do, but if they're undone, then the, the issues and problems could become much greater. So thank you for being here, and, and really uh, think about it even for a brief time so that you get a perspective on what it means for us to be a one united uh, nation. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor O'Reilly. Um, I did forget to mention our Director of Communications, David Mustanen from Dearborn Public Schools as well. <laughs> Next, I'd like to welcome our Superintendent, Dr. Glenn Maleko. Good morning, everyone. Uh, honored guests. I know we've had our trustees and uh, dignitaries recognized. Um, I, I want to thank Mr. Martin for putting this together with Ms. Lark, and I want to uh, thank uh, former trustee McDonald because that was she talked to me about this time last year and said we need to get one going here at Dearborn High. And Mr. Martin, thank you for putting it together and working with everyone to have you know this wonderful uh, ceremony today to honor those that lost their lives. 
So time really has an interesting way of influencing behaviors, both good and bad. No one wakes up and decides to gain 20 or 30 pounds. Rather, over time, we tend to pick up bad habits like eating the wrong food or not exercising. The same can be said when it comes to important celebrations that commemorate significant events and people in our history. We have allowed time to turn these important days into an excuse for a good sale or marketing gimmick. That's unfortunate, especially when we are talking about a day as important as today or this week, Memorial Day week. It's also kind of ironic because M Memorial Day didn't begin with a big fanfare or official declaration. It was started by people who would gather to place flowers on the graves in honor of those military personnel who died during the Civil War. They called it Decoration Day, and it was a good habit that caught on and over time kept growing. After World War I, the holiday evolved to commemorate American military personnel who died in all wars, and then much later, the day became known as Memorial Day and was moved to the last Monday in May. In November, we have a day to pay tribute and thank, you, thank our veterans, those who served in the armed forces, but today is different. Today we pause with reverence as this day honors those who paid the ultimate sacrifice and gave their life while serving in the military. We owe it to those fallen heroes and their families to never forget the true meaning of Memorial Day. Many who died while serving in the armed forces were at the very start of their life, as the mayor had mentioned, and they lost many opportunities and for their families. They had plans, dreams, and hopes. They were looking forward to a future filled with friends and family. They were the next police officers, as we have in, in the back, scientists, engineers, and teachers. My own grandfather, who passed away in 2012, served in the U.S. Navy in the Pacific Ocean off the shores of Japan in World War II. I heard many stories from my grandfather, who was very proud that he served his country. I'm fortunate I was able to hear those stories firsthand, directly from him. On Memorial Day, we must also remember the families who were never able to hear those stories firsthand because their loved ones were lost while serving the country, our country. Let them know that their family member is appreciated and remembered. Let them know that the ultimate sacrifice, the price that was paid for our continued freedom will not be forgotten. The Memorial Day weekend is this weekend. Enjoy the day off. Spend time with friends and family. Grab a blanket or lawn chair and make your way to the big parade as the mayor has highlighted, a wonderful parade. But most important, continue the good habit and take the time to remember the mothers, daughters, sons, and fathers who served our country and gave their life defending our freedom. Thank you, and may God bless our fallen, our veterans, our active military, and this great nation, the United States of America. Thank you, Dr. Maleko. Uh, next up is Lisa Lark. Lisa has been instrumental in identifying some of our uh, Dearborn uh, citizens who are veterans um, and will be remembered today. Lisa. Good morning. From its earliest days, Dearborn has held a strong connection to the U.S. military. Named after a hero of the American Revolution, it's held for 40 years in the 19th century. Dearborn was home to a military arsenal of which three buildings still stand. The Dearborn area has long sent its sons and daughters to war in service of our country. Beginning with World War I, Dearborn High School students have given their lives for the United States. The United States joined the War to End All Wars in 1917, sending nearly five million troops to join the Allied fight against the Central Powers. 116,000 troops gave their lives, joining the approximately 11 million soldiers who died, dirled, who died worldwide during the four-year war. 23 years after Armistice Day, America entered World War II. More than 16 million United States troops served on a variety of fronts, with nearly 406,000 giving their lives. 251 of those who fell were from the city of Dearborn. Due to the high cost of war in the worldwide battlefields, many soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines were buried near where they fell, finding their eternal rest far from home, including many from Dearborn buried in cemeteries in North Africa, in Belgium, in Germany, in France, and in the Philippines. 
more than 703,000 Americans remain unaccounted for from World War II. The Korean War began less than a decade after World War II, with the country still reeling from the loss of so many young men. There were 26 deaths from the city of Dearborn during the Korean War among the nearly 37,000 U.S. troops who died. Though the war ended in 1953, there was never a formal peace treaty, so the Korean War has never technically ended. When the United States first sent combat troops to Vietnam in 1965, there had been a long-standing conflict there among the Vietnamese and the French for more than a decade. American troops entered an unstable area with an entirely new kind of enemy and warfare. By the time the American military left in April of 1975, more than 58,300 men and women had died, including 69 from Dearborn and 10 from Dearborn High. From Walter Blankertz in World War I to James Heward in Vietnam, pioneers have given what Abraham Lincoln called the last full measure of devotion to our country. We honor them today and every day. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And going off from there, we're going to recognize four former Dearborn High School students who gave their lives in service to our country. Current Dearborn High students will be sharing about each individual representing World War I, World War II, uh, the Korean and Vietnam War. First up is Adam Bazzi, who's going to share about Sergeant Walter Blankertz, who attended Dearborn High in the 1910s. Adam. Good morning. World War I is also known as the First World War, the Great War, and even the War to End All Wars. Whatever it may be known as to you, it is one familiar to all. This fierce conflict engulfed the entire globe. Those from 32 countries, five continents, and the battles took nearly 20 million around the world. The impact of such a violent phenomenon created waves that reached even Dearborn. One of our very own pioneers who graduated in the early 1910s, Walter Blankertz, made the ultimate sacrifice for his country and its people. He was the only known World War I veteran from Dearborn to lay down his life in the pursuit of freedom. In the military, he was better known as Sergeant Blankertz of the 120th Machine Gun Battalion. He was tragically killed in action on the 1st of August, 1918, while performing his duties in a French-American counteroffensive against the Germans in France. Such a, no such a noble service is reserved for the bravest of us all, Men and women like Blankertz are the epitome of American heroes. Every day, these men and women stand guard in anticipation, ready to defend and protect our great country. I briefly spoke to a veteran about Memorial Day, and he said to me, this day isn't about people like me. I got to come back home. Memorial Day is about those who didn't get to come back. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Maya Hamka will be sharing with us about Lieutenant George Levigood, who is class of 1935. Maya? Hello. World War II is widely regarded as the most catastrophic event between our modern day nations. It was the most widespread and deadly war of our history, involving over 30 countries and more than 50 million civilian and military deaths. Our world powers at the time united, united to end fascism, and with that brought their young, brave soldiers, including some from our hometown, Dearborn. Dearborn, as Dearborn residents, we all know of Love a Good Park. However, most of us do not know where the name originated from. It came from a Dearborn High class of 1935 graduate, George Love a Good. George was a star, football, basketball, and baseball player. He was also in student council, orchestra, and symphonia club. He attended Michigan State University where he played baseball and got his Bachelor of Science in 1939. Then why was our park named after him? On top of all of his academic and athletic achievements, George also sacrificed his life for this nation. He was the first Dearborn soldier killed in action during World War II. He was killed on April 12, 1942 at the age of 24 during a Japanese bombing raid at Corregidor, the fortress guarding Manila Bay in the Philippines. George Levigood was not only a true American, but he was also a true pioneer. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. Private Howard Ballantine, class of 1951. His story is gonna be shared by Celine Nasser. Celine.
On June 25, 1950, the Korean War began when North Korean soldiers poured across the 38th parallel and invaded present-day South Korea. The United Nations, with the United States as a principal force, came to the aid of South Korea. At the time, many feared that this was the first step in a global communist campaign. For this reason, the United States intervened. To support this effort and to combat opposing forces, the United States sent thousands of its people, including Dearborn's very own Howard Ballantine. Howard Ballantine was a tennis player and a member of the class of 1951 at Dearborn High School. After graduating, he began working at a local supermarket until he was drafted. Private Ballantine was mortally wounded in Korea, in Korea on July 7, 1953, while serving as a member of the 45th Inf Infantry Division. He was laid to rest in Northview Cemetery in Dearborn on September 12, 1953, five days before his 21st birthday. Private Ballantine made the greatest sacrifice, and in doing so, embodied a true pioneer. At Private Howard Ballantine's funeral, these words were recited. For country and his flag, he fought upon the battlefields. With proven courage, he strode on. Thank you. Thank you, Celine. And last is William Dobbs. He'll be sharing about Captain James L. Heward, class of 1963. William. In 1954, the north of Vietnam, wishing to advance the spread of communism across the country, invaded the south. The United States then took it upon itself to protect the citizens of Vietnam from the spread of communism. Many young Americans, some even from Dearborn, answered the call of action when they were needed most. And a few of them are here with us today. I am pleased to have the honor of introducing Mr. Art Garrison, Art is a former Army Specialist and DHS graduate who comes to honor his friend, Captain James Seward, a Dearborn High student who made the ultimate sacrifice for his country. Art and Jim grew up together, attending Howard, Bryant, and DHS. While Art Garrison and Jim Seward chose different career paths, both of them chose to serve the country during the Vietnam War. get my glasses on. All right, it'll take off from, uh, let's see, Robin Williams from Good Morning Amer uh, Vietnam. I'm going to say good morning Dearborn High School pioneers. <laughs> pioneers. <laughs> You're awful young and happy looking. Anyway, I got to get, I'm old, I can't see, can't hear, but I'm all that's left here, so. All right. Jim Linton Heward. If I get emotional, bear with me. Okay, my name is Art Garrison, and I went, I graduated from Dearborn High in uh, June of 1965. I'm a charter member of Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 267, which was named after James Heward. Excuse me. I'm truly honored to be here. Give me help there, Jimmy. And uh, I'm happy to be at this memorial and celebration for all of those heroes who gave the ultimate sacrifice, their very young lives. Air Force Captain James Linton Heward was Dearborn's only serviceman listed as missing in action since he was shot down on July 12, 1972, when he was flying over Hanoi in North Vietnam. He was 27 years old 
he left behind his wife Cynthia and three sons, Matthew, Mark, and Daniel. And you've seen already, Jim did graduate from January class of 1963. Jim's remains were buried at Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia, 25 years from death to burial. Jim was born 31746. I was born 7, 1347. It was about a year and a half apart, and we lived a block and a half apart. Jim lived at the southeast corner of Lawrence and Highland, over by Ford Road and Telegraph area. Okay, we were both Joshua Howard uh, Dragons. We went through that. We used to play at Howard Park every summer. And when I got to meet Jim, hold on. I was a little boy riding my bike. I fell off my bike. I cut my hands up on the glass and uh, uh, stones, asphalt. And somebody picked me up, rushed me into the Howard School where the first aid kit was at and proceeded to tend to my cuts and bruises. It was James Heward. <sighs> Jim joined the Boy Scouts at age 11, as a lot of us did. That was his first oath of honor. And the Boy Scouts, it was on my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country. I also was a Boy Scout. Jim advanced to Clara Bryant Jr. High, he became a, a Bryant Eagle. Jim was smart, he excelled in scholastically and athletically. Uh, played basketball. Then he moved on here to Dearborn High and he became a pioneer, more scholastics, more athletics. And if I'm not mistaken, you can check the archives. Jim was a member of the uh, Dearborn High School basketball team back in the early 60s and they advanced it to the state semifinals basketball game. After Dearborn High, Jim went to college uh, he uh, went to Central Michigan University, and uh, he roomed with a young man named William George. Mr. George used to be a social studies teacher here at Dearborn High School. Uh, he received his uh, degree, and he came here to Dearborn. Let's see, Jim Heward. When he graduated from Central, he went over to Fortson High School and was a school teacher. And he taught until he enlisted in the pilot training program for the Air Force in 1969. Yeah, here's another one. Whew. Mr. George told me, because we would have conversations, that Jim felt like he wasn't doing enough for his country. So what did Jim do? Hmm. Once again, he swore an oath of all to his country and the United States Air Force. Duter, duty, honor, and country. <sighs> Growing up with Jim, I knew him to be strong. He was kind, he was brave, Hardworking, fair, he had fire in his eyes, and he had a passion for life. What's the song? Uh, Always be humble and kind. That was Jim Heward. He always followed the proud tradition of the armed services of the United States of America. Duty, honor, and country. 
Jim Heward is my hero. All right, moving on. As a member of Dearborn Vietnam Veterans Chapter 267, I invite you to join me to remember and respect that the price of freedom is not free. Now we have nine other Dearborn High School graduates who should not be forgotten. So please remember the complete sacrifices made by Sergeant First Class James B. Patterson, a U.S. Army. PFC James Brock, a U.S. Army. Sergeant James S. Hath, U.S. Army. Sergeant Larry L. Gambato. Larry and I sat next to each other in homeroom at Bryant and here at Dearborn. First Lieutenant Thomas H. Gentine, U.S. Army. Tom and I used to go bowling together over at Maples Bowling Alley, for those of you who can remember where that was. Okay. PFC James F. Fleming, USMC. Spec 4 David C. Brannan, U.S. Army. PFC Bradley J. Logan, U.S. Army. He lived over off of Level Good Park on Kingsbury Street. Chief Yeoman, third class, David R. Coetz, U.S. Navy. And again, Captain James Linton Heward, U.S. Air Force. Some gave all. Some I'll just leave it at some gave all. They served, they fought, they died, and received neither their country's glory nor their country's compassion. So I hope this will serve as a special tribute for them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garrison. I'd now like to introduce our final speaker, Phil Smith. He is Director and Chief Veteran Service Officer of the Michigan State Council of Vietnam Veterans of America. He is also the current president of James Heward VVA here in Dearborn. Phil is a retired Marine who spent 27 years in the Corps, and he was in Washington, D.C. when James Heward remains were recovered. I like Garrett, Art, got to put these things on, so <clears throat> must be the age factor or something. Good morning. As indicated, I'm Phil Smith. I'm the president of the chapter, James L. Hewer, Chapter 267 in Dearborn. I was in the Marine Corps for 27 years. Many who join the military today do so at a certain age. Ours was a different time. Ours was a time when you could get drafted or join, or not go at all. Go in a delay entry pending college or a deferment, or face the judge, and join or else. Due to the fact that during our time there was a draft going on, today is a volunteer force defending the country, there is no draft, no judges saying you will go or else. There are atrocities of war, you get wounded, you get killed, or you may not get wounded, but you have remembrances and you recall things. One person whose honors bestowed upon this school is James L. Heward. I did not know Captain James L. Heward, U.S. Air Force, like Eric Gar Art Garrison did, but I felt him. I was in Washington, D.C. in my second tour and was allowed to attend the laying of the unknown soldier in the soldier's tomb the remains who could not be identified, and we were told of Vietnam.
James' sister continued to say, I think I have this feeling, and that tomb was James. She continued to say that, and she continued to push both the Department of Defense and the backing of our senators to check what was left in the tomb of bones or fragments. And through DNA, it was discovered that James L. Heward's remains were in that tomb. And the tomb had to be reopened. This was the first time in history that this has happened. But it was discovered that it was James L. Heward, U.S. Air Force, MIA, and now he has recovered. Thanks to his sister's push and drive that brought his historical event to pass, James L. Heward, U.S. Air Force, now rests in the Arlington National Cemetery. I was there during the placing and was stationed in Washington, D.C. when the tomb was opened. I was not there personally when it had to be reopened. Today, many of the remains of those who gave their life are still missing. There are 1,600 and 11 from Vietnam. That remains to be missing or indicated killed in action, where their remains unknown. Chiang Hai, which is in Hawaii, sends personnel along with not only military but civilian personnel to different places in the country to excavate areas that are known to have soldiers killed or remains un not covered. They continue to excavate the areas, checking out those fragments and other things of those who were left behind. So every day we pray for those who have not come home. We have ceremonies such as today to remember the fallen and these, those who have went before us. Thank you for allowing me to come and to speak and give you a little history that should make you even more proud to be in the Dearborn High School of Pioneers. Thank you, Phil, for your service and your words. Right now, we're going to be joined by the Dearborn High Men's Ensemble, who will be singing Waiting for the Dawn of Peace. And the bell is going to ring. Just sit tight. Teachers, if you have to slide out for your third hour, please do so. Oh, oh, oh. 
Thank you, Ms. Atkins. Great job, boys. My hope is what you've heard today serves as a reminder of the constant sacrifices that have been given by our veterans before us. And I urge you to remember those veterans who are currently serving to ensure our life and liberty. Service to our country comes in many forms, and those who enter it do so for a variety of reasons. Regardless of those reasons, it's our responsibility to remember and honor their sacrifice. Students, after the retiring of the colors, we're gonna dismiss the dignitaries to the James L. Hewer Memorial in front of Dearborn High for the wreath ceremony. Once all the dignitaries have left, uh, please head to your next class. We will get you guys excused. Uh, dignitaries, after uh, the playing of taps and retiring of the colors, if you would join me, um, we will head out for the wreath ceremonies. At this point, I'd like to invite Christian Thibodeau from the Dearborn High Concert Band, who will be performing taps. Christian. He's going to wait on the bell. Color Guard, please retire the colors. I want to thank you all for being an attentive, attentive, attentive audience and all those who spoke so eloquently. At this point, Art, would you be able to come and take the wreath and lead the dignitaries out to the north side of the building um, where we will honor James Heward um, and those who have passed? Students, once again, once all the dignitaries leave, uh, please head to class. We'll make an announcement for you guys to be excused. Thank you again. Down that way and out those doors. Okay, thank you. Guys, you want to